can go after what it is that they really wanted to take our liberties away. So it doesn't. I don't put it past them to come up with a fake motorcycle club to try and you know attack people's liberties. You know, but why didn't they say the goblins or something? Why why pick a famous fake group? I don't know. It's beyond me. I mean, the, what these guys are doing nowadays is just beyond me at this point. I mean, every day that I, I look at the news, I'm just completely just in shock and awe of the fact of the, the blatant lies and crap that they put out and think that people are just going to eat it and think that we're not going to see it and not call them out on it. All right, I want to come back in the next segment before I go to calls and just briefly talk about Cleveland, what you saw last night, what you saw today, the verdict, uh, your take on the situation. Joe Big spent a few days there waiting for the verdict. They didn't have it. He left, came back after the verdict was announced yesterday. He's in Cleveland uh, right now. But have you seen on InfoWars.com, Judicial Watch came out with the secret defense intelligence report where they admit our government is funding al-Qaeda and creating an ISIS caliphate uh, group and is behind the radicals. I mean, we already knew this, but now it's admitted. How big is that? I mean, that's extremely huge. I mean, that, that further proves and justifies everything that we've been saying since day one about a year ago when this entire thing broke out. When we said that they were going to use ISIS to essentially try to take down the Assad regime. I mean, I'm glad that they're finally doing their job, that mainstream people are actually doing something worth, you know, a damn as journalists. Now, I do see some uh, female acrobat right there in the background. That is, I see some fellows doing their job there. That is very good, Joe. It's uh, breaking. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Stay there. We have video feeds at Infowars.com forward slash shows. He looks like he's outside an NBA basketball game. We're going to find out exactly what's happening straight ahead. Stay with us. Uh, that shot two unarmed black males. And I see in the background, it looks like professional sports. Basketball is about to go on. There's a whole bunch of acrobats. First off, Joe, for TV viewers, tell us where you are. Uh, what we're witnessing is you double as reporter and cameraman doing a great job and then give us your take on the verdict. Uh, well, right now we are downtown at the Quicken Loans Arena. Uh, tonight, the Cleveland Cavaliers will have their first home game against the Atlanta Hawks. So uh, earlier today, the Cleveland Indians baseball team beat the Cincinnati Reds. So there are uh, thousands and thousands and thousands of people downtown right now. I'm just kind of pulled back away from the main crowd where everybody is. Uh, so yesterday at 9.30 in the morning, I got up because my phone was going off saying that the verdict was about to be read. And to my shock, <laughs> uh, you know, to the shock of my ears and to my eyes, I saw the judge come out and say that Officer Michael Brillo was completely justified in jumping on the hood of a car and firing 15 times. And what he said was the reason they think it's justified because they can't really prove how many rounds came from his gun that were fatal. They know that one for sure uh, was a fatal round in that. And what was his excuse to be shooting at him? He said the reason that he was shooting at him, Alex, is because they had just finished the car chase and he had run his vehicle right towards the side of the vehicle to try to pin it in. And I guess their vehicle started to move. So he got out of the vehicle and he was standing in front of it. So he got scared that they were going to run and hit him at full speed and pin his legs into his own squad car. So he jumped up on the hood of his car and then he jumped over onto the hood of the assailant's car and began to shoot off those rounds. And he even had time to reload and continue shooting. Yeah, sounds like he went crazed. Well, I don't think he should be a cop. because uh, I've, I've read that similar story. It just sounds like a hothead. Uh, but at the same time, uh, it's not a reason to have race riots all over the country. A true tragedy. Uh, closing comments on this. We saw 71 arrests last night. Uh, what are you expecting to see this evening, Joe Biggs, from Cleveland? Well, last night there was a 71 arrest, but on top of that, there were some protesters who, uh, there's a place down the street called Harry Buffalo on East 4th, and that's where most of the protests happened last night. The window was up, and a protester came and ran by and grabbed a sign and threw it at a table of people. It actually hit a guy on the shoulder and, you know, startled him, injured him a bit. And then also there were protesters running around with pepper spray, pepper spraying bystanders who were innocently just having lunch or dinner, I should say. Yeah, more and more, we, and, and, and let me guess, was this racially directed? Uh, I believe so. I haven't got any confirmation, but I keep hearing different stories, but at this time I'm not really sure. Oh, anybody pepper sprays me for no reason, I'm going to knock him upside the head. I mean, this is insane. Uh, what was that, Nico? Oh, Joe's feed froze for a moment. All right, closing comments, Joe Biggs. We'll get more from you. 
Yeah, if someone tries to pepper spray me, I, 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 all I can say is it will be shocking for them. I got a new little toy yesterday, so. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, be safe out there tonight, Joe. We'll see you tomorrow. All right, we'll see you later. All right, there goes Joe Biggs. I'm sure he'll now go investigate the cheerleaders, the college cheerleaders. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, I've got to have some fun here. I want to go to Saul, Dan, Antoine, Carter, and others that are patiently holding in this segment and the next. I do have some other news I'm going to hit as well. I'm Alex Jones, your host. Saul in New York, thank you for holding, sir. You're on the air. Hey, Alex. Uh, I was just giving a call because uh, I want to make a comment uh, about the, T the TPP. Oh, we actually got a caller calling about the TPP. Wow, thank you. Yes, the Trans-Pacific Partnership, global corporate government, uh, secret, and Congress uh, is moving to pass it. It's passed the Senate. Well, yeah, and I also wanted to uh, to tie that into uh, kind of what was going on now. Um, I mean, if you look at it uh, from, uh, I guess you could say, like a, a thousand mile or a thousand foot high view, it's really all just, uh, with all the race rioting and all the, you know, distractions, basically. It's just uh, really what it comes down to is that Operation Gladio Part 2. They're using uh, a distraction. They're creating different groups and having everybody balkanize against each other to create a distraction. And they're using all this alphabet soup to throw at people to try and describe basically the fact that they're going to take over everybody and i agree uh, we're going into global government the whole program's moved into high gear for those that don't know describe operation gladio for them well i mean uh, i'm sure you could probably do a way better job than i can but uh i mean more or less uh the first there was there were two operation gladios the first one um was more or less um just a way to be able to uh get people or is basically they created a group of people that uh you know or they more or less attacked them the government attacked themselves they created a group of people uh like a boogeyman to scare it, that got exposed and then it died down the second operation gladio uh started well partially started with turkey uh, and uh, different islamic groups coming together uh with uh globalist government to uh, create Al Qaeda, and it just got expanded from there. It That's right. You have the declassified by the Italians, the NATO option, blowing up train stations, you name it, to blame their political enemies. And that happened all over Europe, not just in Italy, but it came out in Italy. And then you have the whole radicalization of Islam. Uh, and then now it's been declassified, well, not declassified, leaked to Judicial Watch that indeed the Pentagon is running ISIS. Is that not incredible? I know it's ridiculous, and uh, well, just to just to tie it into kind of the uh, the zombie-like uh, creatures that attacked you the other day, uh, they're really their main job is, as peons is just to create a distraction. To be, you know, they they've been handed everything their entire life. I actually, I, I, I sad to say, I went with I went to college uh, with people just like this, and, and they're so weird that you can't even hold a conversation with them half the time. and I, I have to agree to you. I, I, I mean, they were basically like, and I don't mean this meanly, they were like mildly retarded or like autistic but demonic. It's like you add a demon to an autistic person and you get one of these guys. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't disagree with you there, but part of the reason why they cling so tightly onto communism is because all it's doing is just pushing their way of life, which is, you know, the, the mommy or the daddy uh, just gives me everything I want, and I just act out and act like an idiot, basically, on TV. That, that's more or less... Absolutely. It's like a five-year-old crap in their drawers to make the parents upset. Right, exactly. But, I mean, moving a little bit back to the TPP, I mean, they've been... It's not... It's, this isn't the only thing that they're trying. They're trying... So, CISPA, ACTA, you know, all sorts of different HIPAA, all the different uh, attacks, I guess you could say, to all basically do the same thing. And they're not, even if we beat them here, and which I hope we do, uh, you know, I hope and pray that we do, but even if we beat them here, they're just going to try again. And it's not even so much like we have to feel exhausted. This is just like, uh, I mean, we have to get so good at beating them. It's just like taking a run in the park. 
that you just think because they're going to try the exact same thing over. exactly we've got to make it's it like thing. exercise and realize that we beat them nine times out of ten the problem is they just attack us ten times and so they always win we've got to keep fighting keep fighting keep fighting keep fighting we've got to repeal obamacare we look we're beating them on the second amendment we're beating them on abortion but notice they've got control of the federal government so they're beating us on borders they're beating us on energy. They're beating us on destabilization, but not for long. Our own military is leaking that they don't want to work with ISIS. I mean, this is a really good news. That's why the government wants us to have a mindless fight, as you said, with the police and military, because for all their problems, they at least are more awake on average than the public. So we need to be working with them to wake them up, not mindlessly fighting with each other while George Soros laughs from a distance. Anything else you'd like to add, Saul? Just just one last thing I wanted to add. Uh, the first call to the first caller who was uh, kind of getting discouraged because he was trying to explain to people. I've been trying to explain to people, you know, kind of the same thing for years. And what I realized is that you don't need to take the exact articles or the exact arguments that they're being presented. All you really have to do is stay there. I want to hear this. I want to hear what you really do. I think you have any power so that the general public believes that. And so we just lay down. The truth is, what they're doing is outrageously criminal, outrageously bad, outrageously stupid, outrageously centralized. Even for them, it screws up the prosperity. But they can't help it short term getting all that power. So all we've got to do is form an opposition, point out what they're doing, point out the alternatives, have a debate not get radicalized, not get in the civil war, even if they attack us up front, you got to no one to hold them, no one to fold them. I intend to just take licks like Mahatma Gandhi or others, or Christ for that matter, because then that will fully destroy them. Or if we're outnumbered and they take us out at some event like, like the Alamo, that's even better. Just as long as it's heroic. As long as we're outnumbered and overrun, in the end, that will destroy the globalist. Because it's all a fight for hearts and minds, ladies and gentlemen. That doesn't mean they start grabbing folks and putting us in FEMA camps, we shouldn't fight back. It's just that so many people in the liberty movement always prepare to fight physically. I'm saying put that into the info war. Put that energy into taking action. We'll have victories. Spend 30% of your time getting ready for a shooting war. Because if you won't put the time and energy in now to take things back peacefully, I assure you, a shooting war starts. Most of the big talkers aren't going to be out there with their firearms. So I work towards peace. Because anybody that knows my MO understands, if it comes down to physical stuff, I will defend my family. And then I will not be forgiving. But let's not even talk about that. We have liberty. We have freedom. We have common sense and honor. We're the winners. We're the Americana. We trump the globalist every time. We're moving forward. We're having victory. That's why they're moving so fast, because they admit they're in trouble. We are beating the daylights out of them right now. Coming from behind, hundreds of points. And that's why I get ready for fireworks. Get ready for them to pull the stops out. It's going to get nasty, but just know this. Hold fast. We're going to make it through this. All right, finish up real quick, Saul, because i got about five, six other callers like Antoine, Dan, Carter I want to get to. Finish up your point of people that you can't wake up. I just say move on. But you were saying, hey, don't worry about giving them an encyclopedia of proof up front. You were going to finish. So. Yeah, I was just going to say, you don't have to worry about, you know, basically, as I've made the mistake before in the past, of verbally vomiting in their ear for three hours, which doesn't work. <laughs> but uh, basically, all you have to do is just cr just present a small amount of information in your own way. Whether, let's say, if you, uh, let's say if you're into gardening, you know, and you want to buy seeds or whatever, and you talk to other people that garden. You, and you want to talk to them about the TPP or any of these, these uh, you know, different uh, things for government control, all you have to do is just say, hey, imagine if, you know, 
we couldn't even buy seeds. Or imagine if we only had to buy GMO seeds. And that that's in the hard. TPP. Well, well said, yes. So show them something that touches them. God bless you. I just explained, hey, 